Hey guys, Nishquick here. I have wanted to make this video for a very long time and it's been in the back of my head. I think it's finally time to put it out here. I want to get to the bottom of this question. Why does everyone hate Skyward Sword so much? I have had this question for the better part of around 10 to 12 years now, ever since this game came out and it was getting negative press, negative reviews, negative opinions, all that. Well, overall, it is a highly favored game, but it is, I would say, one of the more controversial Zelda entries. And I want to get to the bottom of that question today, because as you guys may know, as you guys might remember from episodes of the EXU podcast, from prior videos that I've made myself, I am one of the biggest defenders of Skyward Sword. It is one of my favorite Zelda games. It is in my top five Zelda games when other Zelda games like Wind Waker and Twilight Princess are not in my top five. So why is this the case? Let's talk about it today. If you enjoy Zelda content, if you enjoy Nintendo videos and all that, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. We are very close to a thousand subscribers and I know we can get there very, very, very soon. So with your help, with your Zelda passion, with your Nintendo love, we can get there. Anyways, let's talk about Skyward Sword, because I, I have a lot to say about this game. So let's ask this question first. Why does Skyward Sword get so much hate? Well, there's a lot of reasons why Skyward Sword gets a lot of hate. So let's start with the first. It is the motion controls. People don't like the over-reliance on the motion controls because that's basically how you play the game. Everything that you have to do in this game requires motion controls. On the Wii, it did. On the Switch, not so much because you have some more options. I'll get to that later. But there is an over-reliance on movement and motion controls in this game, whether it is your sword or the items you use in this game. Your controller is basically your sword. And whenever you control the items in this game, you have to use the pointer, you have to use motion controls to kind of move it around. So that is one massive complaint with Skyward Sword. Second, the game is overly linear. It is very handholdy and very linear in the open world areas. Well, open world, I just made a very big mistake there. There is no open world in this game. There are open areas in this game, more explorable areas, but they're like metroidvania areas to explore. People compare the overworld areas in this game. Overworld is a better way to describe this. People describe the overworld areas in this game and compare them to their own Zelda dungeons. Like it or not, that's how it is. On top of that, the story is linear. The story isn't as open-ended as a game like even Link Between Worlds or, of course, Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. The story is very linear. This game is very linear. But on top of that, some people claim that the overworlds are not well designed. Well, of course, you have the surface overworld areas, which I compared to Zelda dungeons. Like it or hate it, that's up to you. The sky areas in this game, well, let's just say uh, Tears of the Kingdom gave us the real fully realized sky rule <laughs> that Skyward Sword did not give us. So. That's the second big complaint that people have with Skyward Sword, the linearity and the world design. The third is the art style is mad, the characters look weird, like who is this guy with a long tongue? Who is this guy with the flaming hair? Why does Link look so weird? Who is this red haired guy with the giant hairdo who thinks he looks all cool and whatever? Yeah, who are these guys and why do they look so weird? Why do they look like such a beautiful painting from like some watercolor artist? Why do they look so unique and creative and full of life? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you guys that question. Let me know in the comments below. Why do these characters look so much more unique and creative and well-designed and full of life compared to some other characters in this series? Twilight Princess, for example. Twilight Princess has a great art style. It looks good. The visuals are great, but who? Those character models, ooh, still get nightmares to this day, ooh, I just... So anyways, I said my bit on why I think many people dislike Skyward Sword. Many people say Skyward Sword sucks because of all these things. 
Well, let me go back to all of these things and say why I don't think so, and I keep telling people this. Skyward Sword is a great game, but people focus on the negatives, people focus on the bad things so much more than the good, that when discourse and conversations come up with Skyward Sword, people don't even talk about anything good in the game. They just talk about the motion controls are bad, the overworld is bad, everyone looks silly, everyone looks stupid, everything is so linear. Well, what about everything good that the game did? Well, before we get into that, let's talk about why some of these things that I mentioned before may not be so bad. First of all, the motion controls aren't bad, guys. <laughs> well, the thing is, I play this game when I was in middle school, I remember. I thought this whole idea of one-to-one -one swordplay was a genius, was so cool, was so awesome, and I was so into it. And of course, the game has its problems, like motion controls are not going to be as perfect as everyone says. I remember playing this on the Wii, and every time you had to start up the game, you had to put your Wii remote on a flat surface so it can calibrate, and whenever you had to recalibrate when things were messing up, you had to like go back to the menu, recalibrate, and all that. But let me tell you guys this one thing. It was only a couple of days when I had the kind of honeymoon puppy love for this game when I was young that I would play this game standing up as a actual sword fighter and making all the moves and doing all the slashes and sword bashes and the shield bashes and all of that. After that, I would just sit in my recliner chair and just flick up, flick to the side, down, left, right, push forward on the nunchuck, very minimal effort because this game doesn't require you to go crazy with your arm movements. This is an arm exercise, this isn't like you using the shake weight that guy on that infomercial was doing. This is not that. <laughs> and even on the Switch version, it's not as bad as people make it out to be. And what's cool, I don't remember if this was in the Wii version, but on the Switch version it is. There are times when Link's arm goes all the way to the left side or the right side, or he's just doing some weird stuff. Guess what, guys? There is a simple solution to this. There is a simple solution. You just relax your arms, put it in a natural position. Link might be pointing his sword all the way in the other direction. Guess what? You just press the Y button. Just press the Y button and it's fixed. What's the issue? What is the problem with the motion controls? Of course, tilting it to control the beetle is annoying. Of course, pointing it and pulling back on the bow is a little annoying. Of course, rolling your bombs is annoying, but it's not that bad. And guess what? The Switch version has button controls. Button controls. Very, very easy to use. Very easy to implement. Very easy to put on in the options menu. And it just solves a lot of the problems. I tried the button controls. They weren't that bad. I've heard people say the button controls or the way that they played it. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. RGT85, Sean from the RGT85 channel, the most important, most recognized, most relevant Nintendo YouTuber of all time, he even said that you can play Skyward Sword on the Wii. He tried it again on the Switch, played the entire game with button controls, and he enjoyed it. So there's your example from the most informed, most relevant, and most important Nintendo YouTuber of all time. So that's the motion controls, that's the motion controls, that's another thing, but let me talk about some other aspects of Skyward Sword. So of course the game is linear, the game is more handholdy in some ways, but I am now realizing that there is a lot of people online that are not very down with this whole open air concept that Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom have introduced. They say, where is my traditional Zelda? Where is the Ocarina of Time Zelda? Where is A Link to the Past Zelda? Where is Wind Waker and Twilight Princess? Where is that style of story, dungeons, linearity, and just kind of pointing you in the right direction? Well, a lot of people say this, but a lot of people don't bring up the most important game, and I think, in my opinion, the game that does this the best, and that is Skyward Sword. Everyone has wanted traditional dungeons to come back, and why don't people talk about Skyward Sword's dungeons enough? 
That is a question I have. And I've talked to many people about Skyward Sword's dungeons who feel a little iffy on Skyward Sword dungeons and Skyward Sword in general. And sometimes they even misremember things because of their sour feelings towards this game. Some people say, oh, uh, the sand ship? Oh, I don't even remember that. Oh, the ancient cistern? I didn't even like that dungeon. When these dungeons are revered and recognized as some of the greatest, most most beautifully designed, most mind-bending, and most innovative and creative Zelda puzzle box dungeons ever created, ever put in a Zelda game. Yes, of course, people can praise Arbiter's Grounds. People can praise Snow Peak Ruins. I praise the Stone Tower Temple again and again and again, the Forest Temple in Ocarina of Time, the Wind Temple in Wind Waker. But when Skyward Sword discussion comes up and people automatically say the game is bad, I go to them and I ask them. The first thing I ask them is, so what did you think about the dungeons? What did you think about the Lanero mining facility? What did you think about the ancient cistern, the sand ship, the fire sanctuary, the sky keep? Did you enjoy using the time shift stones? Did you enjoy going into the underworld of the ancient cistern and climbing all the way back up? And then they kind of fall silent and say, oh, well, yeah, those are good, but yeah. And, and then the conversation just kind of doesn't go in the way that they expected because there's no denying. There's no denying that the traditional Zelda dungeon idea, that whole puzzle box traditional dungeon idea of the whole Metroidvania style of dungeons with small keys, dungeon items, mini bosses, final bosses, it was perfected in Skyward Sword and people are not remembering and people are slowly, I think, starting to forget. And maybe that's just me misremembering things. Maybe it's just me looking at a different side of the internet and where people are not praising Skyward Sword as much, but that is just what I'm seeing. And it's really sad. It's really sad that one of the best things about this game, the dungeons, the puzzles, the Zelda formula that everyone loves is starting to be forgotten because people can't pick up a Joy-Con on their right hand and left hand and actually just simply minimally move their arms or even just set it to the button controls and the options. That's one thing, like this game has some of the best puzzles, the best uses of the items, very, very, very fun mini bosses and very, very fun end bosses. Say what you want about Mike Wazowski and this flaming ball of walking molten rock, but you have some of the greatest and most fun bosses in Zelda history in this game. You have Girahim, you have the final boss, which I won't spoil. You have Kaloktos, who many consider to be one of the greatest, one of the best bosses in the entire Zelda series. And again, moving out of the puzzles and dungeons and all that, people want linearity. People want an impactful story. People want that emotional story. People want the emotional music in Zelda. People have said very strange things that I don't agree with, like, oh, the open world in Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom needs to have that music, that Zelda music, that Zelda music that really pumps you up and invigorates you. Guess what, guys? All that stuff is in Skyward Sword. All of it is in Skyward Sword. Skyward Sword has my favorite story in all of Zelda. Even though I am praising Tears of the Kingdom story, Skyward Sword still has a better story in my opinion. One of my favorite video game stories of all time, with some of the most well-developed, well-designed, most expressive, and most relatable characters in the Zelda series. You got Groose, you got Zelda's dad, Master Gipora, you got Girahim, you got Zelda herself, one of the best versions, best iterations of Princess Zelda. And then you got the man, the Chad, the stand-up guy that Link is in Skyward Sword. Because look at, look at this guy, look at this guy in Breath of the Wild, look at him in Tears of the Kingdom. Every time something major or something big happens to him, he just has the same look on his face. The only time he's really happy is when he's cooking food or taking selfies. Well, Skyward Sword Link actually reacts, actually emotes, and actually has emotions that you can see on his face. So, I don't know. Everything that people want, everything that people feel like Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom was lacking in, is in Skyward Sword. Well, 
I have said in other videos, I love both formulas. I love the linear story heavy formula of Skyward Sword. I also love the open air formula of Tears of the Kingdom. But when Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild don't have my favorite kind of puzzle box dungeons, I remember that Skyward Sword has it. When these games don't have the impactful linear emotionally charged stories, I remember Skyward Sword has it too. You know what else Skyward Sword has? It has the music. It has one of the best OST's best soundtracks in the entire series. Say what you want about the barren sky, how there's nothing to do there, but just listen to that music. Yes, that music is truly breathtaking. And then you're just chilling out in Skyloft and you hear that music and you feel like you're part of this community, you're part of this world. And then you go down into the surface and you're chilling out in the sealed temple with the old lady and Gruus and that music it makes you feel so calm and serene and makes you feel so good. So yeah, to those people who miss that kind of Zelda music, and if you haven't played Skyward Sword, what are you waiting for? Yeah, again, I might be preaching to no one here, I might be screaming at the clouds here, but my thing is, I remember when Skyward Sword HD was announced in the February Nintendo Direct in 2021 after the Nintendo Direct drought. I remember people online saying, this is not the Zelda game we wanted remastered. We don't want this game. It went so far as industry insiders claiming and doubling down on the Twilight Princess and Wind Waker remasters saying that don't worry, better Zelda games are coming. I was so sad to hear this. Is this game really that bad? And of course, like, I agree, Skyward Sword can be very handholdy sometimes. Fi was very annoying in the original game. There are some very bad things that this game does, unfortunately. But again, I tell people, there's so much more good in Skyward Sword than there is bad. And when people play this game, I feel like they really focus on the bad. And it's very sad, it's very unfortunate that people look past the creativity, they look past how good the dungeons are, they look past how good the music is, and how emotional and impactful the story is, and how good and well-written and well-developed the characters are. And there's so, so, so much to love in this game. And I want to address this now to the new Zelda fans, the people who have come in with the releases of Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, and especially to those people who have maybe not played as many Zelda games as someone like me or someone like, say, RGT85, the most well-known, recognized Nintendo YouTuber of all time. I hope you guys understand what works well on Skyward Sword instead of focusing on the things that don't work. And Skyward Sword has, in my opinion, the most traditional aspects of Zelda. Like I said, the dungeons, the story, the world, the characters, the music. And you guys, you new fans, if you haven't given this game a shot, maybe don't listen so much to the negative and maybe just give it a shot and see what you think of it. See how you like it and It'll give you a really good encapsulating feel of what the Zelda series was like before going into this modern open world setting. Of course, Zelda 1 was very open world, it was the first open world game, but things got a little more linear and truncated in Ocarina of Time and beyond that, so I personally think that Skyward Sword is a better encompassing traditional quote unquote, I'm gonna put that in quotes, traditional Zelda experience than even something like Wind Waker and Twilight Princess. 
because in my opinion, the story is better in Skyward Sword, the dungeons are better in Skyward Sword. Those are very important aspects of the traditional quote-unquote Zelda formula. And of course, the music is great, and if you have problems with the motion controls, just, just see how I'm playing this game right now. Like, I'm putting in such minimal effort, and again, I've also played this game on handheld sitting on my bed with the control sticks with the button only control options. So think about that. There's so much more to love in this game than criticize and feel upset about because many people go so far as to say this is the worst 3D Zelda game. This is the worst Zelda game of all time. And I keep hearing a lot of this criticism and I just don't personally understand. If someone can explain it to me in the comments below, very respectfully, I'd be open to hearing it. And if you guys have gotten to the end of this video, well, thank you very much because I'm a very big Zelda fan. And I just had to really get all that off my chest. So let me know what you guys think about all this in the comments below. If you enjoy Zelda, Nintendo, RPGs, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. It really helps out a smaller channel like mine. And yeah, this is Nishquick signing off. Have a great day. Go play some great games today. Like The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD, which is on the Switch. Very widely available so go support this game give it a shot and come back to this video and let me know what you think i'll see you guys in the next one later hey guys this is nish quick thank you so much for watching that video and if you enjoyed it check out these two videos on the left and if you aren't subscribed why not hit that subscribe button on the way out i'll see you guys in the next one have a great day and see you later